Hi guys, Tony Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the Sennheiser Ambio Soundbar. Now this is the most expensive standalone soundbar you can buy in the UK or in the US. It costs £2,200 and that's a lot of money. Now my previous benchmark was the Samsung HW N850 or Q80R which is practically the same thing and that could be found now for around £600. So it just gives you an idea in terms of what I'm comparing it to. Now at this price tag you can find full blown Atmos setups. However, for those audiophiles who might be wondering and watching and being like, why would I ever spend this much money? Simply because it's an all-in-one solution. It doesn't require any speaker cables to be dotted around the room. It doesn't require any uh, wall mounts to be done. It's just one simple unit that you place in front of the TV. So without further ado, let's get into the review. So first off, let's talk about the build quality and design of this thing. It's absolutely massive. Now, the thing is, if you're going to be placing it in front of your TV like I have done just for testing purposes, what you'll find is that it kind of obstructs the bottom part of your TV. So you'll want to make sure that either if your TV is actually has got a larger stand and you might want to check the measurements on Sennheiser's website or that you're going to wall mount your TV. Now if you want to wall mount the soundbar you can do so, there is a bracket that's provided in the box. However, you'll need a wall mounting kit which will cost an additional £50, worth bearing in mind. Now the, that's not the only thing that is big because this massive little pole over here, this metal pole, is actually the calibrator. It's an audio calibrator that comes uh, with the device and allows you to tune in the Ambio soundbar. You plug it via a 2.5 mill, mill, millimeter jack that can be found at the front of the soundbar. Now in terms of the controls there's a bunch of buttons at the top of the soundbar as you can see it's a mute plus minus ambio mode um, and then the source select as well with an NFC tag which allows you to quickly uh, pair it with NFC. Now it's worth bearing in mind in terms of connectivity you do have um, Wi-Fi in order to update uh, the actual bar and you've also got Bluetooth but Bluetooth is limited to the AAC and SPC codecs only which is somewhat surprising but at the same time this also does have Google's Chromecast functionality so if you're an audiophile and you want to stream um, music wirelessly via your phone what I would suggest is to uh, do it via Chromecast via like the Bubble UPnP app um, or any other app for example YouTube. Now the soundbar does come with a remote. The remote itself is actually quite handy. I must say it's well built and it's a relatively good size. Um, what I do find however and what my fiance also found is the fact that the time it takes for the soundbar to actually switch on takes a long time. So if you're going to come in the morning, switch on the TV and switch on the soundbar, what you'll find is that you'll have to wait these extra seconds and you can see all this time, by the time it switches on, um, then we'll get there. Now the, the actual remote itself uh, provides, there you go, now it's on, the, the remote itself provides um, volume, source adjustments, uh, muting, ambio to enable or disable and if you disable it you'll be able to see a little no, um, tone comes on and then the ambio light um, goes off. You can disable that light even if it ambio is enabled but it's just worth bearing in mind. And then you've got EQ uh, preset EQs which are at the bottom as well. Um, each of them are pretty correspondent to what you're going to be watching. So for example if you listen to music I suggest a music one. If you're watching movies I suggest movie. Neutral is a little bit more, um, I say less dynamic but it is the most natural sounding one that you get so if you're listening to um, news you might want it on uh, neutral. And before moving on to connectivity I do want to mention the OLED display which is found at the front and I do find it quite useful uh, as you'll be able to see as I switch through the different sources it gives me an indication of what's showing uh, this also indicates you know if you mute it or you adjust the volume so the little OLED display is very useful it's at the front and again it can be dimmed uh, via the app. So I touched upon the connectivity and that was wireless connectivity but it's also worth bearing in mind the wired connections that you get and you do get a nice amount. You've got USB to connect um, your, your flash drive or to actually um, uh, to charge your device. You've got Ethernet to connect um, hardwired to your uh, router. You've got TV arc output, three HDMI inputs which is fantastic to see. You've got optical input. You've got a subwoofer pre-out. Now this does not ship with a subwoofer in case you're wondering that is the HWN850 subwoofer. There is no subwoofer which is included and I'll get into that in just a bit. And then you've got RCA auxiliary input 
inputs as well. So in terms of connectivity, I think Sennheiser has done a fantastic job, wireless and wired. You've got a variety of different options there. I would have liked to see Bluetooth, APTX, APTX HD or LDAC supported, but nevertheless, as I said, if you're an audiophile, Chromecast is your go-to um, connection for wireless uh, audio streaming. And now I'd like to quickly touch upon the app. Now the app itself provides um, a, sort of say, I want to say basic amount of controls, but you do get more controls than you get via the actual soundbar or the remote. As you can see, you can choose between connections over here, uh, the input settings, the codec that it's using. You can enable or disable the room calibration. Now the room calibration doesn't have to be done through the app um, or therefore um, the you have to set it up through here. You just do it essentially manually through the soundbar directly and with the microphone plugged in. Just bear in mind when you do that room calibration, you want that mic stand sitting on your sofa and that little mic uh, end tip being at your uh, head level. Now it's all explained in the manual, so um, you don't have to worry about that in case when you get it. Subwoofer, as you can see, I haven't got a subwoofer included um, uh, or uh, installed, so therefore I have it on off. And then the sound feedback is what you actually hear from, um, from the actual device. Now through here, you can also um, set the different um, EQs and this also adjusts the Ambio 3D sound. Now what I suggest is leaving it on standard. What I found is that on light, it wasn't strong enough and on boost, it was overdoing the sort of 3D surround effect. But nevertheless, you can play around with it depending on the different settings. So for example, neutral, you can do that independently from the one on music. So you can have different profiles set um, on there. You can also enable night mode. Now night mode essentially reduces the bass and meaning that you know if you're gonna be watching music pretty loudly and you don't want to disturb your other half or whoever might be um, around like let's say your neighbors you can um, uh, set the night mode on um, or off and again the ambient mode as well can be enabled or disabled through here now what I should mention about the app is that I did find it a little bit strange where I needed to install the Google Home app um, alongside this app in order to get the actual soundbar running. Now the reason behind that and what Sennheiser explains is because the Wi-Fi functionality needs uh, to be set up through Google app so that therefore you can receive all the latest firmwares directly on the soundbar without having to ch touch anything like it's done over the air. However, I did say that why don't you just integrate it via the app and that is something that is apparently coming at a later date, at least at the time of making this video, that's what you have to do um, before doing so. So just bear in mind, you need to install the two apps and you can, of course, after you've done that, um, uninstall the Google Home app uh, if you don't use it like myself um, and therefore uh, let the soundbar just be connected to Wi-Fi. Now let's get on to the most important part of the review. It's the actual performance of this soundbar. Is it worth its 2,200 pound price tag? So first of all, what I wanted to talk about is the actual Ambio functionality. The Ambio functionality is really what differentiates this soundbar from all, its, all of its competitors. With that said, it is also very similar to what its competitors do. And by that I mean it's essentially recreating a sort of um, surround sound 5.1.2 uh, setup or 5.1.4 setup um, through your soundbar. Um, when you're having a normal stereo input. So therefore, if you're watching terrestrial TV, you want that surround sound effect, Ambio does that. But again, that's nothing to be overly you know, shouting about because other companies do a similar sort of thing, which they come from surround mode or smart mode, or let's say on uh, Samsung later models, the adaptive modes, those essentially do the same sort of thing. However, what, you, what I expand, experience and what you will experience when you have Ambio enabled with a soundbar is absolutely incredibly different from what other soundbars do. The reason behind that is actually because of the size of the drivers and the power that they deliver. Now there's 13 drivers on this soundbar, again not revolutionary because other soundbars offer that, however the size of the actual physical drivers themselves where there is um, two which are upward firing, two which are sideward firing, and the rest of them are frontward firing, you get an incredible um, overall 3D or surround sound experience. One that no other soundbar I've ever heard replicates. Now, it does it so well that when you're watching Dolby Atmos or DTSX content, this really comes to even, even more fruition. It comes to the point that you are encapsulated by what you're watching in front of you. To me, it is the best experience I have ever had from a standalone all-in-one soundbar. And that is comparing it to what I previously deemed as one of the best soundbars out there, 
the N850 or even the N950 or the Q80 or Q90R. Now this doesn't have any rear firing speakers, so people will be wondering, oh, so do I not get as good of a Dolby Atmos effect or a DTSX effect? Well, in fairness, I would say this does a better job at filling the room and putting you in a sort of bubble when you're watching the movie that has that sort of content enabled. So without further ado, let me show you a little demo of this. to hear that demo, that Dolby disc is connected via my 4K Blu-ray player which is then connected via the soundbar and then it's being outputted via the TV, via TV Arc. Now in that little demo you had the Dolby Atmos going on and off. Now my camera isn't the best in terms of picking up this but I can tell you for a fact that Atmos effect really made a massive night and day difference. Now for those wondering what on earth happens if I'm watching Dolby Atmos or DTSX content but then have Ambio disabled, it's a question I actually asked Sennheiser. And what happens over here is the handshake, in other words the metadata passes through the soundbar but at the very last stage gets down mixed to stereo. So therefore if you really want to en uh, enable and watch Dolby Atmos or DTSX content you will need to have the Ambio mode enabled and as I said before through the app you can customize that effect and even go through different EQs to see what works best for you. That principle very much applies to normal stereo content where stereo content is being fed through the soundbar where therefore you've got normal 2.0 channel then the soundbar by the Ambio mode enabled up mixes that to a surround sound effect. Of course this is not going to be as good as Dolby Atmos or DTSX content but it's worth bearing in mind. So all I would say about Ambio in this respect is that it is phenomenal at what it does. To me it's the best way of processing the actual signal that's coming in, be it a stereo signal or be it with metadata that has actual height information and side information. This soundbar delivers the best experience I've ever heard from a soundbar. Again, audiophiles will be saying, hey, I could buy a full-blown 7.2.4 system and have mounts all over the room and things. Yes, you can, and you will probably, most definitely, get a better experience from that. And it'll probably cost around the same price. But again, you need to have those cables dotted around the room, you have to have wall mounts of such, and you have to have stands. It's not as an all-in-one solution like this. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the actual sound quality traits. Now all I can do over here is play some YouTube royalty free music and you'll hear it in the next uh, uh, clip and also right after it you'll hear the HW N850 on the smart mode. So this is Ambio mode on the Sennheiser versus the smart mode on the HW N850. <laughs>
Now in that little sound clip, you were able to hear the differences between the two soundbars. Again, my camera isn't the best at picking up the best recording quality, you really have to experience it. But I can share you my experiences. In this respect, what I found is the Ambio soundbar delivers a lot better mid-range. It's in fact the best mid-range I've ever heard from a soundbar, surpassing the Bose um, Soundbar 700, which I deem to have a relatively good mid-range response bettering the one of the Samsung. In this respect, the Ambio soundbar really delivers a forward sounding mid, uh, mids and also are very accurate. It doesn't feel recessed, it doesn't feel subdued, it really feels at the forefront of what you're listening to, be it music, movies, news, you name it. When it comes to the highs, again, it delivers a really nice high-end extension. It's very well, um, very well extended and yet it's not sibilant. Again, you can customize the EQ if you so wish, be it through your TV or through the soundbar, worth bearing in mind, but in its default mode, I found it to be really good. What really separated the Ambio soundbar from the N850, at least in that little uh, music clip, was the overall soundstage. Again, I don't know if my camera actually picked it up, but here the Ambio soundbar was able to deliver a really good immersive sound, which really filled the room. Now, I haven't got the biggest living room over here, but this will be able to fill a massive living room full of sound and the soundstage and the instrument separations you get from this little device, or little big device, is amazing. The best soundbar experience you're going to get. There is one problem, however, and something I pretty much picked up almost instantaneously when I was watching Transformers, as in terms of a test, or going through the Dolby Atmos disc, or watching um, some of my favorite artists on YouTube in terms of music. It's the fact that this uh, soundbar doesn't have a dedicated subwoofer. Now, those who actually look into the specs will realize that this actually has a 30 hertz cutoff. That's actually better than the N850 soundbar, which delivers, and the subwoofer, which cuts off at 34 hertz. So theoretically, we should be getting lower end bass, sub bass that is, on the Ambio soundbar. However, that wasn't the case. As all the music is kind of being jumbled through these drivers and therefore nothing's being crossed over to a dedicated subwoofer, what I found is that the overall sub bass and the rumble and that sort of heart pounding action that you'd get um, when you're watching films and movies was a lot less immersive than um, on the Sennheiser soundbar than it is on the um, Samsung N850. Again, it might have come across in the video or not in terms of the music sample, but it's something that I really noticed and something that kind of struck me. Which does pretty much lead me on to my conclusion and my verdict and my overall thoughts and opinions of this soundbar. This is an extremely expensive soundbar. And it also doesn't have a subwoofer, it's very chunky, doesn't support all the Bluetooth codecs that you'd want, and also takes a while to switch on. Now those things might put off a few people. I know for, for a fact, the fact that it's physical size and the lack of a subwoofer would personally put me off, even if I was super rich. The only thing is I would say is that if you want the best sounding all-in-one soundbar, there is no better soundbar on the market than the Sennheiser Ambio soundbar, period. It is incredibly well-rounded from the sound stage, the instrument separation to the mids, the mid bass and the highs, it delivers a fantastic overall um, frequency or overall performance throughout the frequency range. It is simply incredible. So yes, it's the best sounding soundbar there is. Is it the thing that you should get? Only you will be able to decide. If you're filthy rich and you can afford a dedicated subwoofer and you want to connect this to it, and you want a clean all-in-one solution and you don't mind wall mounting it because quite frankly placing it in front of the TV obstructs your view, then this is the only thing you should uh, consider. If however you don't have as much money, you could buy something like the Samsung HWN850 or the HWN950, get a fantastic experience but won't be as immersed as you would do with the Sennheiser Ambio soundbar. More so, if you want something that is actually does actually have a subwoofer, those other solutions, such as Samsung's um, ones that I mentioned, are ones that actually include a subwoofer. 
So there we go guys, that's my honest, unbiased, unpaid, independent opinion and review of this soundbar. Let me know what, in the comments below what you think of the soundbar. I personally really liked it as I said before and it really would depend on you in terms of if you can afford it. If you like this review make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more of this honest content, our favourite share if you want to have your family and friends uh, look at this and subscribe of course as I said it helps the channel grow. Alright guys I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.